Hey guys, welcome back to uh, the channel. Today, uh, I'm <clears throat> today I'm working on the Vulcan again. I bet you're wondering how many things I can fix on this thing before I'm finally finished and it's reliable. But this is a pretty common uh, thing to go wrong. But uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people don't know about it. I really didn't even know as much about it before this happened as I would have liked to. So I thought I would go ahead and bring you guys along and show you exactly what's going on, what the symptoms are, and uh, how to fix it. And we're talking about the mechanical seal. Now the mechanical seal is what seals the water pump and the crankcase from each other. And uh, so that's a, like a very basic understanding of it. Uh, so, how do you know whether that seal is leaking? It's, it's a mechanical seal. It has a spring in it. I'll show you more about that later. How do you know if it's leaking? It's well, it's got a port. They call it a weep hole or a telltale hole. I'm sure you've seen them in other applications. They're pretty widely used um, in automotive. But uh, I'll go ahead and show you what the symptoms are. So basically, finding this weep hole is different on every bike. But on the Vulcan 750, it, the wheat pole is located right here and at first I thought I was maybe missing a bolt and it was leaking some oil just dripping it and uh, I was like no nah, that's probably not uh, I'll look it up and I'll see exactly what it is and it turns out it was a telltale hole or wheat pole and it's leaking out from there very slowly but uh, steadily you can see that rip right there let's get ready to come down um, but I noticed that it leaks mainly like on startups like right away it doesn't drip enough to the point that you're gonna lose oil quickly this has been going on for a long time I actually didn't even notice it until I cleaned the whole bottom of this oil pan or the crankcase and, uh, and discovered that it was leaking from there. So chances are uh, you got a ton of caked on oil down here. It would probably be best to go ahead and clean that off and see if you have a leak coming out of this weep hole right here. Um, I believe this is a, a coolant drain right here. So we're gonna go ahead and drain the coolant. We need to drain the oil also. And uh, well, let's get at it, so. Okay, I have the 10 millimeter screw uh, taken off and now uh, it's not going to drain anything until I get the reservoir cap off. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got a catch, catch bucket underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew it up here and we'll watch it start filling the bucket. There it goes. So, there's your coolant drain. Get that all drained out. I'm also going to drain the radiator. So, I'm just going to pull the cap off of it. Should be a little that comes out of there. Alright, guys. If, uh, if you have the stock exhaust on your Vulcan, this next step is going to be really painful because you've got to take out, you know, the rear tire. You've got to remove the right-hand exhaust system. So I believe you got to take out the rear tire, um, remove the goat belly, and, uh, you know, there might be a workaround. It's been a long time since I've actually had my hands on the stock exhaust. This is Vance and Hines. All of that is gone. The goat's belly is gone. Um, so it's really just uh, two bolts up at the manifold and one bolt in the back. And it's, uh, it's out of here. So let's go ahead and remove the exhaust. I have an O2 sensor here, so I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it. Get it out of the way. To remove that right hand cover. Okay. 
oil is still kind of draining so we'll let that run its course and then we'll plug the hole up and keep going. Okay, got that off. I bet you're wondering what this is. It's no two sensor, obviously, but uh, why am I using it? Well, you're going to have to go look at those videos and figure that out. Just go to my page and uh, look at my... Uh, my Vulcan jet modification video, I believe it is. It'll be explaining all of the carb tuning and and all of that that I did on this and how useful the O2 sensor was. millimeter back here okay and we'll take this off and set it to the side okay next step is to remove the foot brace or the foot bracket right here we got two bolts See what size those are. 14 mil. Okay. Put those right back in that bracket so I don't lose them. Once you remove the once you remove the brake signal, move that up and over to the side. And get this string out of the way. Alright, next part is removing the subframe bolts. The Allen key. And okay, about eight millimeter eight millimeter. Last those bad guys off. You don't want to lift the bike at all. You just want to rest the gas up or the jack up against it in case the motor drops a little bit when you take this brace off. The 12 millimeter, maybe what these are. Yeah. Take the shirt. 
shroud bolted off, and then I'm just going to take this one off. All right, there we go. And the side frame comes off. So, we'll set this to the side. Okay, now that we have the subframe out of the way, let's go ahead and start cracking these eight millimeter bolts on this housing loose. All right, I believe that is all of them. So let's just start going to take them out. And uh, so what I did, I took the new gasket, stuck a punch straight through it, and traced it, so I got, got it all traced out on the cardboard, poke holes where the bolts need to go. That'll help me keep them all uh, situated. All right, the other good thing about this is that you are sure that you have all the bolts out of there, so you're not gonna be confused when you start pulling it off, and it ain't coming so easy. So, set that aside. spillage. Here's the cover for you. Got a 10 mil nut on the end of this impeller. Go ahead and crack that off. Alright, so you twist and pull and finally comes off. Alright, I had to do some serious prying to get this sucker out of here. It's coming slowly but surely. I banged it up really bad trying to get it out. There it is. All our glory. Goodness. That was not fun at all. Alright, so when I get in here, it doesn't look good at all. Um, so you can see this bearing is absolutely shot. Uh, and there, it doesn't look like it's missing any balls. Count of them, there's eight. I think that's what that bearing comes with. But it is missing its cage. Uh, I'm assuming just completely obliterated because it, it went a long time ago. And uh, the balls are just all pitted and there's quite a bit of rust in there. Now, I'm gonna see what I can do about trying to get that out of there. It's not gonna be easy by any means, but um, I'm gonna see what I can do, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll be able to remedy this situation without completely tearing down my engine. So, the oil leak I was having is coming from behind that oil or that behind that bearing. There's a seal that seals the crankcase, and then it drips down that hole on the bottom. You can see right there, and that's what I was seeing is that oil drip. So, even to fix that problem, I've got to get this bearing out. So we'll see what happens.